Welcome to the DVM 365, coming to you from CVC San Diego. This week, Advanced Star Veterinary has unveiled a new look for its print publications. Starting in January 2013, DVM News Magazine will be named DVM 360 and sport a whole new look. In addition, Veterinary Economics, Veterinary Medicine, and First Line Magazines will be more user-friendly and more hip, tie in more closely with DVM 360 digital properties, and offer a toolkit veterinarians can use with their own clients. I talked with Dr. Mike Paul earlier about his impressions of these changes. Well, I was very privileged to have the opportunity to, to be presented with the, uh, the whole new repackaging and rebranding. And I have to tell you, as a veterinarian, I was absolutely blown away. Uh, the, the unification of the message, the, uh, the common uh, appearance of the journals is all going to make it so much easier for veterinarians. And I think that, that they're going to see a new commitment to a common goal, which is to stimulate veterinarians to do better. And tell us what you think about the DVM 360 toolkit. Well, that was one of the most exciting parts, I thought. The DVM 360 toolkit has every month will have a feature, uh, featured section to help veterinarians with specific target areas, specific goals, and it will allow them to actually put some of the things they've learned into action to know how to do what they need to do and what to do it with. So it's going to be a lot more user-friendly, I think. Also at CVC San Diego, attendees and staff members brought new, unwrapped toys to donate to needy children in the area. Here, CVC Director Peggy Shandy Lane talks about why CVC decided to organize and host this toy drive. When we started planning for this year's CVC San Diego, we decided toy drive was a must-do event. For families in need of assistance, toys can be a luxury compared to food, clothing, and shelter. We wanted to help provide area children with a little fun and spread some holiday cheer. Attendees and exhibitors were invited to participate, and we also collected and brought toys from our office. At the end of the CVC tomorrow, we'll donate all the collected toys for distribution to children from families in need. Of course, the bread and butter of any veterinary conference is the CE, and here we have two of the profession's all-stars with some of the gems from their sessions. You'll hear from Dr. Ross Clark on what he thinks should be paramount in your practice in 2013. But first, Marty Becker says there's something even more vital than great customer service, the sanctity of the human-animal bond, and the other things he's been talking to veterinarians about for the last 20 years. The most important thing, and this trumps all of those combined, is creating fear-free visits for pets. It is not something that requires extensive remodeling. It's not something that requires a huge capital outlay. Once you start recognizing the signs of anxiety in dogs and cats, it's almost like there's been a, an awakening. It's almost like you've gone over the weekend to revival and found Jesus, and now you want to tell everybody about Jesus. Once you find out what it's like to prevent fear and anxiety from happening in a practice and make it nearly a fear-free practice, you're going to have an increased volume and velocity of uh, pet owners coming in for a lifetime. Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Rourke and you're watching the DVM 365. Pay more attention to the progress exams, or rechecks as we used to call it. Progress exams are so important in maintaining the enthusiasm and the interest of your clients. They are great in improving the quality of medicine that you practice, and it just works out well all the way around, both for the mental success, the financial success, and the physical success of your patients to do more progress exams. And we're running in this nation now about a 10, 15 percent. I think that's an all-time low. I think that's an all-time low. We, we need to have 50, 60 percent. And the great veterinarians that I've known are practicing, are seeing uh, maybe 60, 70 percent. And we still see veterinarians in general that do 60 or 70 percent. But then that's maybe 10% of the population of veterinarians. Then it quickly drops off to the 5 and 10% range, primarily with the newer graduates. But that's a really, really a big trend is try to fix everything in one visit. Know you need a marketing plan for your practice but not sure where to start? What's the most important thing you should keep in mind? CPA Denise Tumblin is here to let you know. Well, the first thing that needs to happen is to have a marketing plan. Most practices really don't. Uh, they do it kind of by the seat of their pants, so to speak, and I think that's the first step. Is there an easy fix? I think it's 
relatively easy, but it's just having the discipline to sit down and do it. So for example, to develop a 12-month marketing plan, you need to determine what topics do you want to include, um, what formats or delivery methods do you want to use, what, who's going to be in charge of it, of the different pieces of it, what's your budget, what's the timing and the frequency of the advertising, the marketing, and what, are you, what results are you aiming for? What do you want to accomplish? I think it's important to identify what you're trying to accomplish with your business plan, or I'm sorry, with your marketing plan, and then um, monitor it and pay attention to what's, what's working for you. Thanks for watching this edition of the DVM 365. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions for future shows, please email us at dvm360 at advancedstar.com. We'll see you soon with more veterinary news, medicine, business, and team updates here on The Five. Hi, I'm Oprah Winfrey.